All right, y'all, we're coming to you live with a Slick Rick update. We spent the day yesterday up at HR Innovations with Devin, and it was a good day. We got some stuff done on Slick Rick, and I got a small laundry list of things to do before we were ready to go to the track, which we are wrapping up with our move right now. I was trying to go to Mike Hill's race this weekend, but I don't really think it's appropriate to take that thing to like a legit race with no testing. Uh, brand new transmission. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where you have to like take a step back and say, hey, you know, we gotta crawl before we can walk, before we can run. So let's just not go and enter uh, the 100 meter dash at the gate. So uh, ideally I would have liked to have gone there, but there are some things I have to address on the car. The fuel tank's got a crack in it. I gotta weld that up. Uh, the new transmission lines have to, I have to make a new one on one of the coolers. And we'll get the car out and I'll show you. Uh, and then, what else do I have to do? I have to do something else. Oh, I have to somehow clean out the transmission cooler, which is a nightmare. I have to order a filter for that so we do not have the same issue that we had prior. And uh, put the belly pan and just like a couple little odds and ends, stuff like that. But overall, uh, the car is doing better. So for uh, a quick rundown of, of what happened, we got Slick Rick, which is our... Pro 275 build, 481X, Hartz 140 Turbo, had a two-speed lockup transmission that I thought was a Mark Mickey Trans, but come to find out, it was not a Mark Mickey Trans. Someone got me on Turbo Bullet. So we ended up getting a new M&M transmission from Mark. This one's a little bit different. The last one was a 148 gear set. This is a 132 gear set. The last one had a lockup, trans brake, and external dump. This one has a lockup, has a soft lock, so it's a two-stage lockup. Uh, it has uh, an internal dump, which is spool assist, and then it has an external dump, uh, and then it is a 132 gear set, so a little bit longer gear set. The goal with that is be able to make more horsepower at the start line and let the converter soak it up so like you're already in boost. With that big ass turbo, you need to have it lit off before you let go of the button or else it literally falls off. Uh, the motor just eats the boost and, and you really need to have that sucker going and do all your power management via timing so we went up there to Devon's because this transmission was wired up like is is it we have to add things that are, there's things there now that weren't there before and some of the stuff that was there before is now moved sides so I am not one to go in there and hack up some wiring could I wire some stuff up to make it work yes would it look like Fido's ass yes did I take it to the professional who wired the car originally yes was that the right move yes so we went up there and it was very good. Uh, we did get the car fired up and we did a spool test, which I'll show you guys now before we run out there and look at the car. Uh, but, a little two-step check. Before it was taking about six seconds to get on the brake. We'll show you one uh, where Devin just kind of modified the tune-up and uh, we got everything jiving right, where it got on the chip, I think like right around four seconds. It was like three or four seconds. Three or four seconds. And then he did a second one where he had the spool assist, the dump open, and it was like, on the chip at like right at three seconds so we picked up two seconds just from cleaning up the tune and then we picked up another second by turning the dump on so going from a car that would take six seconds to spool from a driving standpoint gave me anxiety because you have to time it right like homeboy goes and gets in the bulbs quick you're behind the eight ball uh, or you don't want to be spooling up and then you go in first and then homeboy he's got seven seconds to come in and then you're on the chip for i don't know 14 seconds really is what it could take or longer if you don't bump in immediately once you get to the chip so the car was very hard to race and we knew without having that dump on there it was going to be difficult difficult to spool but a combination of uh some like the fueling down uh early on in the tune-up and uh like where we just we just don't have any laps on the car we haven't spent any time with it really the first few laps we've made on the car we're just trying to figure out how the car drives uh and then the last two when we went to the track we were like all right let's try to figure out the tune up and all, the, all this stuff transmission shit out so it was not an ideal situation but now we're starting fresh everything's good uh we'll roll those clips and then we'll go take a look at the car
transmission works before it didn't. Yeah, the lock, the up lock up trans, work. trans brake works. Yeah. Uh, bump you'll have to tune. Yep. But I figured if you're going to tinker with spool up every time you spool it up, you can tinker with bump. Yeah. Up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I figure once I get like the trans cooler at the shop, like I can just kind of sit there and like, right. Spend you know, a day with it and just go out there every half it. hour, cool it down, right, 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 right. put it on the chip. Yeah. Yeah, and then just bump it and dial in your bump settings, you know what I mean? I don't know what we made for boost there, but uh, we'll find out here in a second. It's loud enough. Yeah, yeah it is. It sounded good. Clean. It does. No. I'm at a point with my YouTube channel where I just make videos of what I do every day. Not every day, because we're doing like, I did, I had like a week of daily uploads and people were like losing their mind over that. They're like, oh, it's back. But we're just really busy again. So we'll go to like every other day. But. I'm just documenting like what I do on the daily when maybe a couple days in a row. So like maybe I should just do a segment of me just eating shit because I eat like, not it's not eating shit, I don't eat shit. I don't want you guys to think of that, it's kind of weird. But I eat food like, I'd say probably make, eat like 12 meals a day. Just nothing healthy though, just eating garbage. So I guess it is like eating shit. I got the Bucky's, not a sponsored ad. They got the beaver tails in there. You go and get a beaver tail. Ask them to heat it up a little bit. Knock your damn socks clean off your foot. And then they had a big ass cinnamon roll. I was like, man, I'm gonna get the beaver tail for tonight and the cinnamon roll for tomorrow morning. Power move. Icing, smack. Really played my cards right last night at midnight in Bucky's and Florence. All right, let's go look at Slick Rick. How's it going? What's that? Oh, all right. Oh yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, they're watching you everywhere you go, bro. People are just watching, man. They know what they know what we're, what we're doing. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on over here. We'll show you what uh, what we did here up at uh, HCR Innovations. Um, we got some stuff wired up. They did an amazing job. If you look at this stuff, look at just the quality of the wiring on here. Oh, yeah. uh, like I said, some things have changed. So on the transmission itself, this dump valve was, there was one similar. There was a nitrous solenoid in the governor cover, just like this. So the wiring here, similar. Um, the trans brake was on the other side, uh, did not have an internal dump. And then it has a, a soft lock on the other side, right there. So the wiring was a lot different. Um, previously, we had the <laughs> previously we had everything run through the ECU masters because it acts as a solid state relay. But I was having some issues with reaction times and trans break, uh, and it was causing me to not really be able to cut some good lights. Like I'm out there going like 18 to 20 pretty consistently. Uh, I'd say like my average light is like between a 30 and a 20 somewhere in there. Uh, this thing here like first four or five times let go of the button it was a 240 light like on the money 240 every time and i'm like i'm never that slow so and then i went back and watched some of the gopro videos and when you let go of the but i'd let go of the button and re-grab the wheel and the car wouldn't move so we removed everything from that was 
like with the actual drivetrain going through the EC masters and put it on solid state relays, uh, like the NOS relays. So we have our trans brake, our lockup, our internal dump, our external dump, and then we have the sock, soft lock, which is just on and off. So we got all that stuff uh, all wired up. It's all going straight to the Holly. The trans brake, like even when you back up, when you grab the trans brake, it, it is just way more. How's that button feel? You like the, the button, button I, I, I complained about the button because it's not the same button that I always run in my other cars. Uh, and Devin's like, you're an idiot, the button's good. And I was like, I'll try it. Cause I was just gonna switch it yesterday, but I was like, I'll try it, I'll try it. Um, and you could tell, cause before you'd grab the button and there'd be like a delay, like you expect it to be instant and it would just be a slight delay. Uh, and it could be something that could have been tuned out of the ECU Masters, but all the other cars are running like this. Uh, when you have multiple cars, it's uh, I guess good to have redundancy and consistency and similarities between them. So you can hop in one and like, no, this one's not gonna react faster than this one just because of the way it's run. Um, so ideally in a perfect world, everything could have gone through the ECU Masters. We tried it that way, not talking bad about the ECU Masters. Like I said, I'm sure there's a way that you can configure it to act different, but this is just a simple fix, just like every other car. Uh, I have a ton of these solid state relays. If we haven't ever have an issue, um, we can still run the car. Uh, the well, I guess not. I mean, the ignition, if the ECU Masters ever takes a shit, the ignition is turned on. I'm, I'm sure, who knows? Well, let's just not, let's not go there with it. We'll just keep, keep it running. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, it was a really, really good day. We went up there. Uh, Devin squeezed us in, so thank you, Devin, uh, for getting us in there. Got it all wired up, and we have uh, a little checklist of things to do. So this line right here for the dump, comes off of the cooler circuit. I have a T, but when you put the T on there, this line doesn't fit, so we have to remake this line. But thankfully, we have the Brown and Miller crimp section over here, and the Crimp King is right here, so we're just gonna get crimping. You know, crimping ain't easy, and then we'll get all that stuff all figured out, be able to put our trans cooler on there, which is big, because you need to have the trans cooler on there. Um, what else is there to do? Uh, the fuel tank, it's got a little crack right here. Maybe, I don't know you can you see where the paint is dripping down. Yeah, so there's a little crack right here. Take this off, which is going to be a slight pain in the ass because this fitting at the bottom is a man. Take this off, get it welded up, put it back in there. Uh, I'm trying to think. Clean the car because the car is dirty as hell. <laughs> you clean the whole thing. Put it up on Projax. Put the belly pan on it for the transmission and the engine. Fix the Projax tabs. Fix the project tabs, and then I think we're good to go. So, a small list, but a day's worth of work, really. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get that off and get everything in there and make sure. I don't know if maybe we should put like some like little rubber underneath it to try to like soften it. Because I mean, you got to think like when this thing's on the chip, yeah, it's pretty violent. Yeah, it so, is. Yeah, I mean, the car fires up. Uh, Devin helped out with the tune up there, getting everything all dialed in on the trans brake. Because, like I said, we just haven't had really any laps at the track to to work with it so a uh, big shout out to devin hr innovations i'll link his youtube channel in the description below so go and check that out and uh, we're going to be hopefully racing next week with slick rick the goal is you got tests first so we want to go do some private testing it's really like learn the car more because just going out and racing is really not enjoyable uh, we need to go and test make some laps and then uh, we'll go race so those wednesday night darlington deals are, are looking pretty good especially if we can get down there and test during the day so there's your slick rick update thank you guys for watching we won't see you in tomorrow's video, because I'm not sure if there'll be one tomorrow, but the, the next video that we have, I'll be seeing you guys.